Hi, I'm Gordon from Camera Labs, and this is my review of the Sony FE 12-24mm f2.8 G Master, a fast, ultra-wide zoom designed for alpha full-frame mirrorless cameras. Announced in July 2020 and costing US$3,000, it's Sony's 37th full-frame mirrorless lens and becomes the widest full-frame f2.8 zoom. It also means Sony now offers focal lengths from 12 to 200mm with an f2.8 aperture across four lenses. So forget the holy trinity, we now have a quaternity. I had a chance to try out a production level lens around Brighton and the surrounding countryside and in this video I'll show you everything I've learned about it so far. If you'd like to see my sample images in more detail or at more leisure, head on over to my review the lens at cameralabs.com. The FE 12-24 2.8GM shares the same focal range as the earlier FE 12-24 F4G but with an aperture that's one stop brighter. As a member of the G Master series, Sony also claims the new f2.8 model delivers high resolution and contrast especially towards the corners, reduced flare and ghosting and remains rectilinear out to the extremes too. Put it this way, it's very well corrected. Now it's inevitably larger and heavier as a result measuring 98 by 137 mil and weighing 847 grams. Compare that to 87 by 117 mil and 565 grams for the earlier f4g model but do remember that these sizes do both include built-in petal lens hoods. The new lens is of course dust and moisture resistant. The optics consists of 17 elements in 14 <laughs> groups and it becomes Sony's first lens to feature three extreme spherical or XA elements, one of which is that particularly complex bulbous front element. The curvature on it even demanded a new nano AR2 coating to be developed. Focusing is handled by four XT linear motors set in dual focus groups which delivers sharp results at the minimum focusing distance of 28 centimeters throughout the range and I'll show you a bunch of examples of this in just a moment. There's linear response manual focusing, a focus hold button, and while the bulbous front element understandably rules out front mounted filters, Sony's equipped the lens with a rear mounted filter holder and supplied a template for you to cut your own. It also comes with a rather substantial lens cap. Okay, let's see what it can do, starting with coverage and pairs of images I took at 24mm, then at 12mm for comparison. Like other ultra wide zooms, it's all about the drama of capturing an epic field of view. At 24mm you're already starting fairly wide but as you reduce the focal length you consume more and more of the scene before you until at 12mm you've transformed it into an otherworldly image. Like other ultra wide lenses you do have to be careful with your compositions though as anything in the distance becomes absolutely tiny so be sure to include some close foreground interest too. Once you've got your wide mojo on though you can enjoy some really exciting results. It's not just about big landscape or expansive interiors though, the 12-24 can do a good job at close-ups thanks to its dual focusing group, so here's a bunch taken near to its closest focusing distance, most towards the 24mm end of the focal range. Get close with the aperture wide open to f2.8 and there's even some chance of blurring due to a shallow depth of field, not huge by any means, but it's there if you want it and distant lights can also be rendered into attractive bokeh blobs. For a more formal bokeh test, here's the FE 12-24 2.8GM at 24mm f2.8 and positioned at its closest focusing distance, where you can achieve some nice blurring effects. And now, closing the aperture to f4, then to f5.6, and now to f8. At the other end of the focal range, here it is again as close as it can focus, but now at 12mm f2.8, before closing it to f4, then to f5.6, and again to f8. Closing the aperture right down to f22 will provide diffraction spikes from bright point sources of light. The skies were a little hazy when I tested the lens, so viewing the sun directly didn't deliver as sharp spikes as out of light, but if you can reduce the size of the light source, say by partially obscuring it as I've done here using the leaves on a tree, you can enjoy crisper results. How about optical quality? Here's a shot at 12mm 2.8 and when you zoom into the corners there's still a tremendous amount of sharp detail as you'd expect from an expensive G Master lens. The same applies at the other end of the range here at 24mm 2.8 and again looking very crisp into the corners. Maintaining decent performance at the 24mm end is also an area where the new Sony performs better than some of its rivals. Here's another example, this time close to the subject, but again starting at 12mm 2.8, where again the details remain respectably crisp right into the corners. And the same view at 24mm 2.8, again looking very good, and in both cases there was also minimum geometric distortion to worry about. As I mentioned earlier, this is a very well corrected lens. 
Now for some more sample images I took with the 12 to 24 2.8 and again you can take a closer look at Camelabs.com if you're interested. All of my images were taken with a Sony A7 Mark III and a JPEG straight out of camera. It's easy to create dramatic shots with the coverage on offer but if you're careful with your positioning, particularly in terms of shooting square onto the subject, you can actually enjoy massive coverage at close range without any of the converging lines often associated with very wide lenses. Of course you could achieve the same range with the earlier F4G version but the new 2.8 GM model is definitely sharper throughout the range, across the frame and at near and far focusing distances too, plus that extra stuff of aperture does allow for slightly shallower depth of field effects and of course the chance to shoot at lower ISOs. Now the chance to gather more light while maintaining sharp results into the corners will also be welcomed by astrophotographers and while the full moon and cloudy skies unfortunately scuppered my own chances of grabbing some star fields with the lens in time for this video, I do hope to add some to my final review at Camelabs.com in the future, so keep an eye open for them. Wide lenses are also ideal for video as I'll show you over the next few clips. Once again you'll enjoy huge views inside and out plus the drama of nearby subjects suddenly becoming dominant on the frame against a large backdrop. That's why they're adored by extreme sports shooters who can get really close to the action. At the 24mm end you can also capture some environmental portraiture or pieces to camera with the f2.8 focal ratio providing some blurring in the background. As with all wide lenses though, do be careful when framing and positioning human subjects to avoid distortion. Suffice it to say, the coverage is also perfect for those who like to vlog, so before my final verdict, here's a few examples of it in practice. Do note though that the focusing errors, especially seen at 24mm, were down to personal user error. That's me, but remember Sony could have made it easier for me and other single person crews by offering screens that face forward on their cameras. Right, let's go. Hi, I'm Gordon from Camera Labs, and this is a quick vlogging test with the Sony FE 12 to 24 mm f2.8 at 24 mm f2.8. I'm filming this on an A7 Mark III in 4K using the full frame of the sensor and also with the sensor shift stabilization enabled. And the audio is recorded with the Rode Wireless Go. It's a windy day, so I apologize for any wind noise. Now, this could be the perfect camera if you're into filming because it covers such wide focal lens as our beloved of filmmakers and vloggers. So let's see what this lens is capable of. Okay, I've zoomed to a wider angle. How's that looking? But this isn't as wide as this lens goes. I've zoomed it to around the 16 millimeter mark because I'm sure that there are some people who currently have or are considering the 16 to 35 2.8 G Master, which is one of Sony's best performing lenses. But let's see how much wider the 12 to 24 can go. Wow, revel in that wideness. Look at that coverage, pretty epic, huh? Well, I can't see it because of course, none of the Sony A7 bodies at the time I filmed this had a screen which could face forward, but I'm fairly confident that at 12 millimeter on full frame, I'm probably in the picture as indeed is everything else. And that's the benefit of having a lens like this is that you can do these massive environmental showcases. Just look around you at this lovely wooded area. Looks like it's gonna rain actually. Oh, and just out of curiosity, this is filming at 12 millimeter f2.8 with no stabilization. Now this lens is so wide, it may be possible to hand hold it for filming without any stabilization and that could in turn eliminate any sensor shift artifacts that you may have been seeing. So this is how it looks. Let me angle that up. This is how it looks without stabilization enabled. That was quite a big drop there. Now, of course, this isn't Sony's first 12 to 24 millimeter zoom for mirrorless cameras. It, of course, a while ago made the 12 to 24 millimeter F4G. Now, optically, that is a different recipe. The quality isn't as good, but the coverage is the same and the aperture is one stop slower. So to give a kind of simulation of what you might expect in the filming environment, let me put this back to 24 millimeter and we'll try filming a section at F2.8 and then at F4. Okay, I'm back at 24 millimeter f2.8 here. I really like vlogging at 24 millimeter. It's wide enough to get a lot of your surroundings, but not so wide that you have some mad distortion to deal with. Now this is at f2.8, which is the benefit of this lens. Let's see how it looks at f4. 
Okay, now I've switched to F4, still at 24 millimeter and still holding the camera at arm's length. In fact, I should say that for this entire section, I've been holding the camera at arm's length. So how does this look difference wise? If you are satisfied by the F4 depth of field that I have here, then you may well be served absolutely fine by the 12 to 24 F4G. However, if you like a brighter aperture, the new F2.8 model will give you that. But if you don't need to zoom wide, or wider than 24, but you really do like that shallow depth of field effect. Remember there is of course, Sony's 24 millimeter F 1.4. That is a fantastic prime lens that allows for a very shallow depth of field effect. It's great for this sort of thing. Okay, that's enough of the vlogging. Now on with the rest of the review. The FE 12 to 24 millimeter 2.8 becomes another worthy member of Sony's premium G Master series, delivering excellent quality results in every scenario I tried. You already know the coverage takes you from wide to extremely wide with a constant f2.8 aperture, but the impressive part is discovering just how good the results look right into the corners whether focused near or far. It's certainly a high performance aspirational lens for those who demand the best performance and have the budget to pay for it. But if your pockets aren't sufficiently deep there are a number of decent alternatives. Sony's own FE 12-24 f4G matches the range but loses a stop of aperture and the ultimate sharpness to become just over half the price, not to mention lighter too. If you absolutely need the f2.8 aperture but can sacrifice the widest coverage and a little sharpness at close range or at the 24mm end, then Sigma's 14-24 2.8 DGDN certainly looks tempting at just under half the price. Personally, I hope Sony also develops some fast, wide prime lenses that are either more affordable and or brighter than f2.8, but in the meantime, the FE 12-24 2.8 G Master becomes the highest quality ultra-wide zoom for those who do want to go wider than 14 or 16mm without slowing down on the aperture. In conclusion, the FE 12-24 2.8 G Master is an impeccable lens, albeit with a price tag to match. Right, that's it for this review. I hope you found it useful. Do let me know in the comments what you think of the lens and also whether you think Sony is actually producing the lenses that you want for the system. Is anyone else out there missing a really fast wide prime? Maybe it's just me. Anyway, don't forget to like and subscribe if you found it useful and I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. Bye bye. <laughs> Did you get it?